Um, <clears throat> my name is Margaret Ann Windsor. I uh, was kidnapped from Buckingham Palace in uh, 1941, and I was born in 39, the best that I can find out. I was born January the 7th of 39. Uh, I put this in previous videos. I've made quite a few over the past few months in Facebook, and of course, since I found out about my kidnapping, and uh, really I started finding out in the winter, early fall of 83, I was flown out to Larry Flint's during a political campaign to replace Larry McDonald, a doctor from Atlanta, and he was a U.S. congressman whose plane was shot down. Uh, the KAL Korean uh, passenger was shot down by the Soviet Union when it veered out of um, or into Soviet airspace. So all aboard died, and um, I had written about uh, Larry McDonald and other doctors, and it involved mind control. But the, what I want to focus on at the moment, I put all this in other tapes. And I, the media knew about my kidnapping before I ever did. So they're not going to tell it. It's um, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, the Kennedys, the very people that were responsible for my kidnapping on the press. And uh, quite frankly, people in this country adore uh, the Kennedys. They don't care that he did kidnap me and who I am. Uh, it's been a fiasco with me. In fact, this is just one of the scenarios. Uh, I did the book, 77, 78, to give you a little background. And Larry Flint was shot because he was under subpoena, which was questionable. But uh, in Lawrenceville, Georgia, March the 6th of 78, and I was doing the book. I'd finished it, was redoing it and working for doctors and tri living at Moonraker. Apartments in Marietta. I had a letter from the U.S. Attorney's Office, William Harper, June the 23rd of um, 79, and I'm having to leave out of a lot of the things. Um, April the 1st of 80, I was filled full of antifreeze and should have gone into a coma and died. Instead, I mean, I was switched from one to all kinds of illegal was done to me. I was taken across the state line, and I finally lived. I had gone for a tox screen to an, the emergency room, West Paces Ferry in Atlanta, April the 1st, to try to um, see what was given me so I, I, I could see if, uh, what am I trying to say here, if it could be neutralized. And, of course, uh, it was a fiasco what they did to me. And uh, that was uh, Easter was that next Sunday. And I was carried across the state line and um, ended up living. I mean, I had brain damage. I was in hell. <laughs> uh, and trying to work for the district attorney, Fred Simpson, there in Huntsville. And I did, but I was told not to speak of any of this. And I didn't find out about my kidnapping until I was flown to Flint's. Uh, he lived in Bel Air on St. Cloud then, and I was a candidate uh, to replace Larry McDonald for U.S. Congress uh, person. Then I started finding out about my real name, and uh, my I was kidnapped from Buckingham Palace in 41 and brought to Moulton, Alabama, which is Lawrence County, Alabama, and um, it's near what became NASA and what was Marshall Space Flight Center and Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville. So my kidnapping brought in money and um, a hostage her upon um, treaties, businesses coming to this country, uh, scientists, all kinds of things, uh, not just money per se, with my kidnapping. Uh, it brought into this country. Uh, so my father is King Edward VIII, the real King Edward VIII. I shouldn't even have to say it. It's so preposterous. This is his photo. And by the way, if you get the books, the numerous books that have been printed with lies,
they've redone them. This is my dad. And my dad was married to Claudia Ruth O'Keefe Windsor, sister to artist Georgia O'Keefe. And this is the double that married Wallace Simpson. So when this whole thing was a lie. My father was married to my mom who would... I guess the the family, some of the Windsor family, uh, thought she was a commoner, and of course she was Catholic or had been um, when she married my dad. I'm assuming she changed uh, to the Church of England. Um, so anyway, um, some of my family didn't like the marriage, and um, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Bilderbergers, Kennedys, Roosevelt. The free, Freemasons, which have names like the Trilateral or the New World Order, Illuminati, are responsible for my kidnapping, along with my Uncle George the Sixth. And I'd like to say here, he was uh, the movie, uh, The King's Speech, where he's made out to be the good guy in all this. Not one word in The Queen or any of this has ever the truth ever been told. This is Roosevelt. There's the supposed queen mom when my mother is the uh, legal queen mom. I'm uh, Victoria the second heir to the British crown. I was born in 39. By the way, this is when um, 1939 is when this meeting took place planning my kidnapping. This is in um, U.S. News and World Report, April of 97. So uh, the whole thing, this is Kennedy. This is JFK. His father was point, appointed ambassador by Roosevelt to uh, England from 36 to 46 now, JFK and his brother Joe, Joe Jr. flew in there and even were at the embassy and, quote, helped their father while he was ambassador. Now, then, I always wondered how I was gotten out of Great Britain, out of England, from Buckingham Palace. My uncle gave them access. So he helped take down his own brother illegally, kidnapped me, and this has all been covered up but not covered up. Here in America, they very well know it, and I wouldn't have known it if the British hadn't told me. And uh, so I wonder how much Jeff K. and his own brother, and I know his dad helped in my kidnapping. So here was the reason that I have, um, you can't tell the torture that's been done to me and my sons, Mark and Scott, who are heirs after me. But they took me from a loving home. They stole everything that was my father's. His, his, he, he was the legal uh, king. The whole thing was a lie. A 99-year seal put on a marriage that never happened. He was married to my mom. Uh, and then my birth. And to bring me over and give me another identity, name of a twin, they were illegitimate. I grew up being told that was my name, and it was a pigsty I lived in. But the point I wanted to make here is I came to Roanoke in, um, I came to Roanoke in October the 20th, I believe it was, of 86. And I had been just shut down from getting jobs or anything, and I still had some of the sex from the antifreeze, really. It takes a while to get over that. I was lucky to live. But I came here and had no place to go when I got off the bus at 3 o'clock in the morning, a town that I didn't know. And I remember I had lived shortly in Nashville. It was like running me from one place to the other. And everything had been stripped from me. I had no money, no apartment anymore. It was stolen, et cetera, et cetera. And the laws broken. Nobody would touch it. They still won't. So I lived a little while.